So what we won when we worked in Congress to pass the Local Community Radio Act was a birth itself. It was a victory itself. But more than that, it was a chance. It was an opportunity to change the world. We have one year, maybe less, to apply for and to win likely the last low power FM community radio licenses that our country will ever have, that we'll ever get. So this summer, folks at the Prometheus Radio Project and a national coalition are gonna lead something called Radio Summer. And that's a national outreach project to help your community get ready to win your own low power FM station. Are you guys ready to work to get those licenses? Yeah? Are we ready to build a media infrastructure worthy of the world that we want to live in? So that's great. Um, let's do that. Um, one of the first and most strategic congressional leaders who believed that we needed that chance, that we could take that opportunity, was Congressman Mike Doyle. Congressman Mike Doyle listened to students, to workers, to churches, to families in his district and decided that community radio would revitalize the city of Pittsburgh, his district, and our entire country. He and his staff, including the amazing Kenneth DeGraff, who is going on to work for former Speaker Pelosi, and they led hundreds of other legislators to pass the Local Community Radio Act, which is going to bring us the chance to win low power FM radio in our cities and towns. So it is my absolute privilege to introduce and to congratulate Congressman Mike Doyle. Thank you. Wow, this has been a great conference. Uh, I think one of the best ever. Uh, and it's great to be up here in Boston. Uh, yesterday, uh, Ed Markey and, and uh, my good friend Donna, we were fighting the culture wars, wars down in Washington, DC. Uh, we weren't sure we were gonna be able to get here, but uh, we're glad to be here. And uh, this is a great, great day uh, to celebrate what, what's the culmination of, of 10 years of hard work and persistence to bring us to this point we are today. But uh, I want to say thank you to Free Press, uh, to Josh and Craig, uh, and uh, how about our commissioner, Michael Copps? Let's give him another round of applause. The best FCC commissioner I've ever had the privilege of working with. Uh, and my good friend, Eddie Markey, from the great state, uh, our host state right here. Uh, tremendous talk he gave today. Uh, Ed and I and others were fighting that net neutrality bill on the floor yesterday. Uh, it, it's, it's absolutely amazing uh, how our friends in the Republican Party don't let facts get in the way of a good argument uh, as we talk about many of these issues. And uh, how, how about Erin McNeown? I, I mean, what a talented young lady she is. And I understand her newest album's called Hundreds of Lions, and it's at the merchandise table. So I told Aaron I was gonna give her a plug tonight. Let's make sure we get out there and buy some of her records. Uh, to my good friend, uh, Petri Dish, or Petri Dish as we like to call him. Uh, Petri is the, the heart and the soul and the brains behind the movement to allow people to communicate with their neighbors in their community. And Hannah, uh, wow, what a, what a team those two are. Her indefatigable spirit and persistence. Uh, when we got down, Hannah made sure that we didn't stay down. This was a 10-year battle, and she kept us motivated. You know, we learned a lot of things in this process. It was a long process. Uh, but we learned that if we worked together, uh, and that we had bipartisan efforts, we reached across the aisle. Uh, and it's because of people like you in this audience that we were able to beat the big Beltway lobbyists at their own game. People like Garland Gilchrist, a board member at Seattle's Reclaim the Media, and Lapito Flores, founder of KYRS LP, a great low power station in Spokane, Washington, who both provided incredible support to my friend and colleague, Senator Maria Cantwell, as she worked to convince the NAB to get out of the way of expanding community radio nationwide. Both of them are here at the conference. Let's give them both a huge round of applause. And we have to recognize people like San Antonio organizers like Graciela Sanchez and Deanne Queller and, and Austin engineer Jim Ellinger. They pushed hard to bring LPFM to Texas. Deanne and Graciela and many others 
pushed hard at the FCC to stop media consolidation and expand local media at one of the most powerful FCC hearings on record, putting LPFM on the map at the FCC. And Jim Ellinger built a relationship with Senator Kay Bailey Hutchinson's staff that resulted into powerful insights into what was keeping a variety of senators from supporting the bill at a very key time. They're also here at the, con uh, at the conference. Let's give them a round of applause and congratulate them. And it took people like Jim Price of Boynton, Georgia, a longtime radio engineer for Christian stations and a gospel LPFM broadcaster. He convinced Congressman Nathan Deal, now the governor of Georgia, to stand up for low power FM. At the time, Deal was a key Republican legislator on the telecom subcommittee. And when he understood that LPFM wasn't an issue on the left or the right, but for all communities, a bipartisan wave of legislators joined my colleague, Nathan Deal, and created a movement in the House that helped us pass this bill once and for all. Mr. Price passed away recently, but his legacy lives on, and we remember him tonight for his contributions to this bill. You know, I could probably go on for a long time naming all the people who played a role in this, and there's, there's just far too many leaders to mention by name, but I just want to say tonight to every person who ever picked up a phone, whoever wrote a letter, whoever told their local story on why LPFM matters to them, you all should be very proud of your work. Because what we found out is you don't really need to have big lobbyists on your side when you have the voice of the people on your side, and you made that happen. <laughs> now, as Hannah said, we've got a lot of work to do. We have to make sure that the passage of this bill now translates into a thousand or more stations across this country. We have to make sure that our friends at the FCC uh, make sure that these licenses are getting out to the people that we've intended these licenses go to. Uh, we have to educate folks and help them make these applications. Uh, I'm counting on my good friend Michael Copps, and I know he will not let us down. And I want to know, I, I want you to know, I have had personal conversations with every member of the SEC about the implementation of this bill. We're going to make sure that we have thousands of low power FM stations across this country and do it as soon as possible. So, we got our work cut out. <clears throat> There's a lot more going on in Congress, too, that we need to work. It doesn't, the work doesn't end right now. Uh, just a brief word about net neutrality. I mean, the idea that we wouldn't have a rule that says that you can download any legal content on any device anywhere you are without worrying about somebody blocking that content, this is what caused this is what created the innovation and the success that we see in the internet today. You know, when Republicans say that the government's trying to regulate the internet, all you have to do is substitute the word government and insert telcos and cable companies. And that's what the reality of the situation is, and that's what we're trying to stop. We're not trying to tell the, have the government regulate the internet. We want it to be open so that innovation continues. Uh, this is a battle we have to continue to fight. We lost that fight on the House floor yesterday, <clears throat> but I'm happy to tell you uh, that bill is dead as a doornail in the Senate. You know, it, it's, it's going nowhere. I have to tell you, I was always frustrated these last couple years. We'd pass a lot of good legislation out of the House when the Democrats controlled the House, and it always got blocked in the Senate. And I always said, that goddamn Senate. You know, this year I'm saying, thank God for the Senate, uh, as they're blocking what's coming out of this House of Representatives now. Listen, we need to continue the fight. We need to continue the work. We can't do it without you. Let's continue to work together. Let's build this grassroots movement across this country. Low power to the people.